Hi guys, and welcome to Tickers, the series on the Limitless podcast where we we review listed companies on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I'm Matthew. And I'm Zayon. And today we'll be talking about Kingston Wharf's ticker as KW. But before we get into the video, we would love if you guys would subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Also, follow us on your podcasting platform of choice. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of them. It really means a lot to us. And another reminder, guys, this is Tickers, where you can actually pick which stock we possibly review next. So if you're watching on YouTube, all you have to do is comment below which stock you'd like us to review next, and hopefully we will review your stock. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go. Let's go. So how you, you feeling about this one? Um, mm. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> um, you got to do this one simply because of our chat with Jeffrey Hall, actually, mm. guys, if you haven't seen that, um, particular video, I mean, first on, I know we'll link it, uh, in the description or so on, but yes, mm -hmm. uh, that chat was good. And Jeffrey really gave us a lot of insight to how he invests and his investment philosophy. And, you know, I guess how he helped to build a lot of these companies, and the synergies between like Kingston Wars and all the other um, companies within that group. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. He's a funny guy. Like <laughs> he, he bought yeah. some, <laughs> some jokes in the recording and <laughs> even before recorded. <laughs> nah, yeah. He's hilarious, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to share my screen. Let's go. You see it? Kingston Wars. Kingston Wars is always one of those weird stocks when I just started out. Um, weird hole. Uh, I don't know. I just, I never really understood it. It was always trading at a premium. Um, when was when this? COVID, this was pre-COVID. This was 2019. 2019. Yeah, wow. See there. Oh, it was yeah. like 60, mm -hmm. 60, 70 dollars. Yeah, it was always around that price. And the PE was like very, very high. At that time, you know, you, you're learning about stocks. You're learning how to value mm -hmm. them. And all you're thinking is PE, mm -hmm. PE, PE. Remember how high like, the PE was? No, but it was like maybe 50s or so on. 60s. 50? Wow, well, it's like yeah. 10 now. Yeah. Wow. Mm, the stock price is half, it more than half what or it was then. So yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I don't know, but let's talk. Let's talk about the, the, the company, the business. Uh, mm -hmm. Let the folks know what they actually do for money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. definitely. So we have our usual format. So the first thing you want to try to understand, how does Kingston Wharfs make money? So they actually, in their like financials, they actually kind of split up their operations into two main segments. There's what's known as terminal operations. And then there's mm -hmm. what's known as logistics. Uh, right now, I think terminal operations is like the bulk of profits or bulk of revenue. I think it's like 60 to 70 percent uh, versus logistics, which is the remaining. But when you when you think about terminal operations, remember that there is a wharf um, or what I should say is there's actually. They operate in the Kingston Harbor. So Kingston Harbor is one of the largest natural harbors in the world i didn't i think i've heard about it before is the seventh or yeah i just know they're, they're one of the largest um natural harbors in the world i actually had a picture here i wanted to try to show it um to show you so they, they operate in the kingston harbor but they're technically not the only let me pull this up they're technically not the only um, wharf company that operates here. So I don't know if you see my screen here. So this here is Kingston Wharfs. Uh, but they actually have a neighbor, the Kingston Freeport Terminal. So there's technically a competitor. So there's this, this area here is the harbor here where you'd have the ships that come in. You know, they, they could be coming in from all kind of different countries all across the world other parts of Jamaica, other Caribbean countries, whatever. And essentially they will come here with their packages, their um, 
whatever shipping items, Good it could be sense. cars, construction materials, food. If you think about it, um, Jamaica, yes, we do produce some amount of goods, but there's a lot of things that, you know, we as Jamaicans get used to, like think about technology that we just don't make. Like we don't yeah. have um, chip manufacturers, computer manufacturers, things like that, phones, like people, the phones, the computers, all of those stuff, like things like that. Yeah, some will come in on a plane, but there's some things will have to come in on the ship. Especially yeah, yeah, when you're yeah, trying yeah. to move like bulk products. Like, like a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a car. Or even, I mean, trucks, um, cranes, all of those kind of stuff. Uh, the best way, you can't, you know, fly down a crane. You have to ship it. So they are, they operate in this part. And I'm just going to really like you on a crane, here. bro. You just fly it in pieces, you know? <laughs> okay. But yeah, like you see Port Royal here, the airport, mm -hmm. this, so this yeah. harbor here, they have this section there and you see the, this is the Port Kingston causeway here. Like when you drive into Portmore, um, yeah. so you, you can pass it. So yeah, they operate in the Kingston Harbor and they, as I said, they break down their business segments into terminal operations and then logistics. So the harbor itself is essentially or their region of the harbor is split up into what's known as berths. Um, so berths are like different sections of where the ships will dock. So it's like the ships will come in, dock at the berth. Uh, they can drop off items, pick up items. And Kingston, Wharf, Kingston Wharfs right now has nine, nine berths, right? And they have what's known as Steve Doring, which is essentially you taking off the crates or the containers. And then you're moving it from the ship onto land, and then sometimes moving things from Jamaica um, back onto the ship. Because sometimes what happens is there's an exchange. There's like, okay, you could be bringing in cars from, I don't know, Europe, and then, oh, you're mm -hmm. sending, I don't know, fruits or um, some other package or coffee or something like that. You're shipping it out. So it's, sometimes there's actually exchange. It's not just, okay, the ship comes in, dumps its items, and leaves. It makes sense sometimes that, okay, if this, you know, we can just exchange those goods. So they, they have like Steve doing services where they have these, you know, machines, cranes and stuff like that, that will take packages or transfer packages in between the ship and the wharf itself. So that's yeah. really what the terminal operations part of their business is. And as, as I said, it's the bulk of the revenues, I think it's like 70%. And then the logistics side is more the processing of the items that come in so they have some different logistics facilities they have one called the total logistics facility i'm actually showing a picture on the screen now this essentially how, how i understand how it works is that for example say you are price mart right price mart is in a lot of different countries jamaica is just one of them and they have a lot of different items Price Mart sells a lot of tech, food products, things like that. So you may want to import it. So you import it into the wharf. Um, but maybe Price Mart itself, I'm sure Price Mart itself has some amount of storage, but there's a limited amount of storage. So what can yeah. happen sometimes is that you import the item and then you can actually store the products here. But it's like storing it in a very organized way so that, for example, if you need say you run out of stock of that item it's like you can easily track it and it's not like you have to search through every single box it's stored in a very neat way that is supposed to be allowed to easily access it and then some of these stuff are even temperature control because sometimes it could be like a food item that you need at a certain temperature and that if you yeah. if the temperature went you know to a certain degree could spoil the food and then you know that could be millions and millions of dollars of goods wasted so they offer that they can essentially, Kingston Wharfs essentially can outsource those logistic services or handle that. They, or they offer outsourcing of those logistic services to different businesses. And for example, Price Mart was one of them. So this is one of their logistics facilities. You can see it's pretty big. And they also have a new one that they built called the Integrated Modular Logistics Facility. Uh, this one... They're building it in phases. So I saw that 
They said their phase one was built, which is at Ashenheim Road. They were estimating about, I think, 25 million US or like 4 billion Jamaican. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's apparently fully the phase that has built out at their AGM June this year. They mentioned that it is fully leased out the different tenants there already. So they, they're already seeing a big demand for the business. And they mentioned that, for example, Price Mart was one of those companies that they signed a deal with. And it makes sense because Price Mart isn't just, remember, Price Mart has operations in a lot of different countries and a lot of different countries in the Caribbean. So it's like, say, a ship to Jamaica because of Jamaica's location um, close to the Panama Canal. And then the item is stored here. And then maybe another country in the Caribbean, say Barbados or Trinidad, Cuba, whatever, maybe there's a price mark there, a dam rep. And so what happens is that when they are out of stock of the item, instead of having to ship from all the way in maybe the United States, China, whichever other country, I can just ship from Jamaica. And remember, it's it's supposed to be stored in a, it's right next to the wharf. Um, and it's also stored in a very, I guess, organized way. So it's supposed to be easy to access so that you can get the item within a timely manner so that you don't run out of stores for um, for that item or maybe run out of stores for too long. So you, you can still get that business. And so I just sh showing some pictures of it here. So apparently this was at the groundbreaking ceremony. Um, the Prime Minister and Joholness was there. They, you see that there's a section of it that's cold storage and I'm seeing like some solar panels on it too. And then there's a section which is like, I guess, dry storage. Um, mm. Yeah, so that's one of the... Oh, this is located in Aceso, no? In where? A special, economics, a special economic zone. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think so. So they have, um, with, with special economic zones, I remember them being, having like, you know... I think uh, there's a tax incentive? Tax exemptions. Yeah, yeah. There's certain mm. tax exemptions, so on importation of certain goods, it'd probably pay very little to no taxes. I need to look and see exactly how that works. If it's literally zero taxes or just, a, I know it's a significant decrease at least, uh, but there are a lot of benefits to having a special economic zone. Mm -hmm. So I'm almost sure a lot of these um, areas have that status. Mm -hmm. um, I will double check, but yeah. Yeah, and then see I mentioned here, packaging services, kitting, processing, pre-retail services. So it's like, oh, they can take the packages out of the box, maybe repackage it into another smaller container, depending on what you want. So it's it's that, that's a service, that's a logistic service that they offer to different clients. And as you can see, some of the clients are pretty large if you look at a client like Price Mart. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's another way that they make their money. So it's not just bringing in the item, they try to, I guess, add more value along the line you know and some of the important parts i mentioned before that the location the fact that it's there in the kingston harbor the harbor is one of the what is it one of the deepest i think it's one of the deepest natural harbors in the world as, and so that allows them to be able to bring in certain large ships the other important thing is how close we are to the panama canal and that's uh one of the major shipping areas so it's like right as you come out of the Panama Canal, you can just come here to Jamaica and then you can have the items here in Jamaica and then say send it out to other areas depending on, you know, if it's needed. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, you realize Jamaica is such a great logistics hub, though, like based on where we are located geographically mm -hmm. in between like Panama Canal, North America and the rest of the Caribbean and South America, mm -hmm. we're just like smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just it's it it makes sense. I don't know if you remember a few years ago they wanted um to use Goat Island, I think, as a logistics hub. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I remember Goat. people were uh, upset about it because of, you know, environmental issues with a lot of ships mm. being in that area and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like do you know that there's even so apparently there's some shipping companies that specifically ship a lot of cars and they actually chose Jamaica for their trans shipment hub. So it's essentially what we were saying, like 
say you're shipping from somewhere like the US, you ship it to Jamaica, but then Jamaica is essentially just an intermediary. Um, so it's like a place that you can just store the items in an organized way so that when a country nearby needs it, you can just move it out from there. So the name of, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Hoeg, if it has the two dots over the O, they are one of the largest. Oh, that's Herg. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's German? Yeah. yeah, I believe so. I can't remember uh, what the two dots over the O are called, but mm-hmm. it's like that pronounced like a U. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they have autoliners and they bring in a lot of cars. And what they said was that um, they actually use us for shipment to other products from like the wider Caribbean, Latin America, and countries as far as we as apparently Australia and New Zealand. So a big part of, I guess, Kingston Wharf's value is really its location. You know, the fact that it's in the harbor, it's not easy to just make another harbor and compete with them. They kind of have somewhat of a moat. Yeah. You can just build another country (laughs) right next to Jamaica, you know? So yeah, that's how I, what I found out about how they make money. In terms of what is going on in the ecosystem around the company, um, something that we've spoken about uh, in our last, a lot of our last few episodes, a lot of the manufacturing distribution companies are complaining about it. I remember, I think it was 2020 when COVID had first hit, there were a lot of issues with just supply chains um, because of like, you know, limited work hours and mass protocols and all that kind of stuff. And um, But supply chain issues are always happening. It's very easy to hit the supply chain. I mean, there's a lot of different things we've spoken about before. The drought in Panama, not going to go too much into it, but essentially to ship items, the Panama Canal is one of the main, it's one of the main shipping routes to pass items through because it essentially is a big shortcut. And Panama is facing a lot of droughts and you need a good amount of water for the canal to essentially function to allow you to get the items across. So when you have the drought, you're able to get less items through. So there's shipping delays. So, you know, a lot of Jamaican companies, if they are, say, a manufacturer, they import items into Jamaica or even if you export because of these delays in shipping, um, sometimes they're running out of supplies. Um, so Kingston Wharfs, naturally, as a shipping company, is going to sometimes face issues. Maybe they're expecting a shipment in um, and it's just going to be delayed by a few weeks or maybe even a few months, depending. Um, and maybe sometimes they want to, someone wants it to, to export from there. Maybe they had a ship that was supposed to leave, but then because the Panama Canal is backlogged, the, the ship can't leave or the ship is just waiting there. So, I, you know, shipping, there are lots of supply chain issues going on. And even recently there was like this strike that happened for three days on the East coast of the United States that shut down um, the ports, so many ports. And that was uh, reportedly to like cause us to lose billions of dollars, I think a week or even a day. I think they only ended up striking for three days because they found some sort of middle ground somewhat, but it's only temporary apparently because they still are in negotiations and it may last up until mid January. And if they don't come with another deal, you may see more strikes, more shipping delays. But one of the things I'd say that's interesting, if you look at Kingston Wharfs, and I'll, we'll pull it up and we go into the uh, the Excel sheets. Like even despite 2020, which was a big time for supply chain issues, they were still able to, you know, be quite profitable. So I don't think it's gonna affect them necessarily as seriously. Like they, uh, they, they still I think will be able to get enough business, but even through times mm-hmm. of big supply chain issues, they've been able to, you know maintain their revenues and profits somewhat. Um, but yeah, it's still something to mention. It's something that if I was at Kingston, if I was a person investing in Kingston Wharfs, I'd be trying to look into things like that. And there's even other stuff like, you know, there's all kind of, there's like a trade war going on between China and a lot of com- countries now. Like uh, the US, I think uh, the yeah. UK, like they're saying, oh, they're putting in these tariffs. Yeah. So like that's, ages, I guess though, that's been... Yeah. I guess more recently I, I've been seeing some escalation because I know that mm. it's like China has been making, ele- has been pushing electric vehicles and then the government has been subsidizing a lot of the countries or the companies. So they're making really cheap electric vehicles 
way cheaper mm-hmm. than the, like the US or the UK can make it because of the subsidy and their cheap energy. And so it makes it, it's, I guess for the US and the UK side, they're like, hey, but we have these businesses that are manufacturing electric vehicles. Who's going to want to buy an electric vehicle? Yeah, it's um, the Chinese one is, could essentially be 30% cheaper, 40% cheaper. Like, why would someone do that when it could be a still a good quality one? So they're trying to like put in the tariffs to then raise the price so that it's somewhat equal. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of supply chain stuff. Um, I'd probably try to look, um, read on stuff like that if I was invested, I guess, in Kingston Wharfs. Another thing to look at is naturally just Jamaica. I mentioned, I think, before, but because we're a developing country, we are naturally going to have to import way more generally than we export. So I was even looking at statistics on that. Like, you know that we import um, four times the value that we export. So or apparently wow. our bill or import bill, this was in a loop article this year. I mentioned that our import bill was $2.45 billion between January to April 2024. But then our export revenue was like six hundred and it's got like six hundred and fifty million. Um, mm-hmm. so I I mean it, it it's I guess it makes sense where it's like something like that. The yeah. fact that the fact that Jamaica I naturally way more than I export and I'm just one person. <laughs> sorry. The fact that Jamaica is a developing country and we're naturally always going to have to import. And then I mean if it's importing it's either it's either you fly it down or you ship it down. And then yeah, you can yeah. you can fly down stuff, but you can't fly down everything. You're always going to have to ship. So it's like you're always going to kind of need the wharf. And yeah. there are a limited amount Worse of if wharfs. We start exporting too. Mm-hmm. Because whether we're doing imports or exports, you're going to need the wharf. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. And I found this nice website, uh O is it OEC.world. They actually have some statistics on well, these are from 2022, uh, but they actually go into the different products that we import and the different percentages of our total imports. So, for example, mineral fuels, mineral oils, products of the distillation, which makes sense. Like we don't have, you know, this is basically saying oil and gas products and stuff like that. We don't have, yeah, we have our refinery, but the refinery is pretty old and we don't have oil, or at least that we know yet. So you have to import that, like <laughs> cars, all those kind of different products, those different oils. That's a that's the mm-hmm. largest, yeah, that's the largest section of our import bill for 2022, according to this website. 24 percent iron and steel. You don't fly down oil. <laughs> yeah, um, mm-hmm. iron and steel is a big part. To 4.28 percent machinery appliances. That's like just under seven percent electrical machinery electronics. Um, plastics, even cereals is a big part. So I was even thinking about this. You notice like some of these largest segments like the iron steel, cars, tractors, electric uh, machines, those kind of stuff. A lot of that is related to construction. So it makes sense to then if the construction industry, for example, is booming or there's supposed to be some heavy growth in that. Yeah, there's a like yeah we have carb cement that can produce cement but there's a lot of other products that you know you have to import and it's showing in the import bill so i was even mentioning like mm-hmm. yo the jamaican construction industry how is that you know what are the plans with that uh there was an article that i was reading that was saying that we are is an observer article came out october 11 2024 titled the government to spend one trillion on infrastructure projects over the next five years. That's six billion US um over and over yeah. five years. That's a billion US per year that they're lining up. But it's not technically it's not just the I think it's actually they said public um public private partnerships. So it's not just um the government, but I'm looking at things like that because I'm like, yeah, things like cement, you have carb cement to produce that, but a lot of those other stuff just, we can it, in reality they need to just fix the roads that's my biggest thing just fix spend a piece of that trillion fixing the roads that's mm-hmm. all I want mm-hmm. but yeah um public private partnerships for sure mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah like even something like a lot like of that. these things 
look at the, the what they say garbage trucks and so on all those have to be imported mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah i mean it makes sense if they've used a lot one of the largest or well, that's one of the best they had the best way to move it down so or the only way to move it down mm -hmm. in some cases so um yeah. so i would be and they, i think they even mentioned it at their agm this june June 2024, they mentioned that over the past, I think this was a quote that said over the past two years or so, they have seen significant increases in construction material and construction across Jamaica, most of what would come through the Kingston port. So, um, yeah, I think like if you track the construction industry, seeing some of the things that the government is outlining, um, Kingston Wharfs is going to likely benefit from stuff like that. And in terms of some of their competitors, so remember I showed the map before um, where right next to the Kingston Wharfs. So Kingston Wharfs is over here. I'm showing on my screen. But then Kingston Freeport Terminal is also another. So it's not owned by Kingston Wharfs. It's owned by actually, I think, a French or it's leased. So it's owned by the government of Jamaica, but it's leased by this French company, CMA CGM. Um, mm -hmm. they're like one of the, apparently they're the third, I think I saw that they're the third largest shipping container company in the world. Uh, they started leasing it in 2016 from the government. Uh, I was trying to find some comparison in terms of how much, like which one is bigger. I think Kingston Freeport Terminal is actually bigger because there was, a, I think, an article that mentioned, so apparently what you... What you use to grade how efficient or large uh, a wharf is, is how many essentially packages it can process. But the, the package term that they prefer to use is 20 foot equivalent units or TEUs, because that's, I think, mm -hmm. one of the standard sizes for those crates or containers. So the, the mm -hmm. TEUs, what I saw was that Kingston Wharf says they. At the time, they said they were aiming to be able to move a million TEUs a year. So a million 20-foot equivalent units. And that was, I think, 2023. But then what I saw was that Kingston Freeport, Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited, KFTL, so there's KW, which we're talking about a listed company. There's KFTL, which is not listed as a private company. They, So they had some different upgrades and stuff, like they had there was their base and then they had phase one phase two i see that they technically have a capacity to move up to 3.6 million teus um uh -huh. yeah so because i don't triple yeah triple. but i don't think it's that they're they're not moving that amount yet because there was an article a gleaner article if this is um true there's was, it was saying transshipment volumes increasing they said in 2022 both KFTL and KW process approximately 2.17 million TEUs. So I, I don't think, essentially, I think KFTL, I guess, has a greater capacity, but they're not actually meeting that capacity, um, which is kind of wild when you think about it. Like you have that much more capacity, but you're nowhere close to that. There's, that means there's a lot more Room value. Room. Yeah, there's a lot more value that I guess you could extract. Which is kind of where it's yeah. like, does that mean that you over upgraded? Because then the money is spent on that. What if you had done that somewhere else and then just kind of upgraded piece, piece versus like, I don't know, I guess different strategies. Could be anticipating an increase in, well, both I imports guess. and exports. Yeah. So I, I guess they're probably just being proactive. Yeah. They don't have, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? It's a mm -hmm. private company. I wish they were listed. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I think Kingston Freeport Terminal actually has a greater capacity. Um, and I guess I'm wondering like what if like if I'm a shipping company, I want to ship the thing to Jamaica. I want to ship it to the Kingston Harbor. What makes me choose Kingston Wharfs over Kingston Freeport Terminal? The thing is, I guess there's less information. I mean, I probably do some more digging to find out more about Kingston Freeport Terminal. But there's, I guess there's going to be a limit because it's not a public company. I don't want to maybe know more about their logistic services because maybe... What if um, Kingston Wharfs has better logistic services? And that could be why, hey, I feel more comfortable shipping my item there because it's not just, okay, I ship the item and then I have to handle the logistics. I have to set up a logistics. I can just say, oh, Kingston Wharfs, handle my logistics for me. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, that's Kingston Freeport Terminal. The other one to mention is another listed well, listed company, which is Cargo Handlers Limited. So Cargo Cargo Handlers operates in the I think it's the Montego Freeport, so that's in Saint James. Um, so they're not, I guess, a they're, well, I guess it depends because I guess if you could ship the item, is either you ship Kingston or you ship to maybe Saint James or so. Um, so I guess depending on where company, the ship is, yeah, depending, depending on where the ship is coming yeah. from, it could probably either go St. James or there. Um, Case of Wharfs is a lot larger though, because King, um, cargo handles yeah. is a lot smaller. Um, but you know, I wish you even mention out like if you guys would like us to review cargo handlers, you can drop a comment below. We could do a full stock review on it. Um, I've really looked much into them before. Um, but yeah, I just looked at them because of their cement operations. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah That's the only yeah, time yeah. I ever looked at them. Mm-hmm. They have a stake. Yeah. This is it thirty percent in buying house Buy, cements or something. Buy, oh, yeah, something like yeah. that. Buy house cement, I think. They're yeah. one of the only people, other than, well, yeah, they're one of the only importers of cement into Jamaica. Of cement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess they probably import in Saint James then. At their yeah yeah. And then other thing to mention, we'll talk about it more, I guess, when we get to management, but Jamaica producers and the Panjam links, because the largest shareholder in Kingston Wharfs is Jamaica producers. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then actually, in our the episode that we big up Jeffrey Hall, in the episode that we did with him, we spoke a lot. He actually went into the JP Panjam deal and what happened. So I don't want to probably go into it too much here. But we'll just link try link that episode there. Um, but it is uh, important to mention there. And in terms of some of the plans that they have, uh, I guess logically, you know, they want to upgrade and expand. Um, they have a, they have some massive massive upgrades planned. So at their AGM this year, June twenty twenty four, they mentioned that they want to sp- they plan to spend. A Hundred million US, a hundred million US, or which works out to sixteen billion Jamaican, over the next, uh, I think, five to six years, in upgrading the wharf. Like so, that would take them to about twenty twenty nine, twenty thirty. So I guess they have a twenty thirty vision. <laughs> so mm-hmm. one of the things that they said I want to use the money for. They remember I mentioned the the whole birth thing, which is like a sec birth spelled B E R T H. That's like a section of right. the wharf. They said they want to upgrade one of the berths. I guess this is berth six out of the nine. They want it's to upgrade. Crazy, the... Because then they just upgraded berth seven one of the think. berths as well. Yeah. Maybe. So they want yeah. to upgrade berth six now so that it can accommodate accommodate um even larger ships. Um they also mentioned that I remember I think I mentioned before that they want more of their business to come from logistics, so they're gonna be looking for partnerships. There and it makes sense because they built out the logistics center. Mm-hmm. One of the, the, the phase Their one that I mentioned. logistics have been growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been growing recently, so it makes sense mm-hmm. to go all in on that too. So they want logistics essentially to be half of their revenue. Um, I'm not. I should probably look into the margins. Maybe the margins on logistics are better too. I don't know. Mm. And. I mentioned the, one of the logistics hubs they built, the new one on Ashenheim Road. So, they did the phase one of that. They also wanted to build a phase two or essentially expand that. And they mentioned at the AGM that they're hoping to start that process this year. Uh, they also mentioned like they, have, they want to spend some of this money on buying equipment, which makes sense. I guess maybe more cranes and more machines and IT stuff cause, so that they can process the packages faster. And something else I even mentioned, which makes sense, they they want to actually apparently be more resilient to the effects of climate change because I'm sure it's you know it's by the wharf there when you have mm-hmm. the hurricanes and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure like you know the waves and the water and stuff come up somewhat, and mm-hmm. I guess the amount of rain you can get in that area too. Um, if you want to avoid flooding and it's stuff protection. like that, yeah, yeah. So that they have um, some massive. I, I just looked it up by the way. Mm. Um, there there's no difference in terms of margins for uh, logistics and ancillary versus the terminal operations. It's not really much of a Similar? Difference. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's basically the same. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I guess essentially what it could mean is that, say I'm a person who you are getting terminal operations money from me because the package was coming in and whatever, but now 
I essentially can then sell the logistics service to you. I can say, hey, I have more capacity now. Why don't we handle mm-hmm. the logistics for you um, instead of you handling the logistics or maybe someone else? Okay, it makes more sense. Yeah. So maybe it's that too. Yeah. Yeah, right now, they're at about a third um, for logistics. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I said, why do I want to grow it to half? And even growing it to half, that wouldn't necessarily mean that the terminal operations has decreased. I'm pretty sure they want the terminal operations to increase, mm-hmm. um, hence doing spending all of this money mm-hmm. um, for upgrades and so on. So yeah, mm-hmm. would be an ambitious vision indeed. Yeah. Um, another thing is that um, they said they want to actually set up a logistic hub in Western Jamaica. So apparently they have certain, they said that there was an article in the Observer June this year, there was June 2024, they were saying, that apparently some of their business partners in Western Jamaica are asking, hey, you guys are really good at logistics. Could you build a logistics facility there? So they said that they are looking, sorry, they are looking into building a warehouse and a logistics facility in Western Jamaica. And it kind of makes sense too, because when I was looking at it, you have a lot of, um, I know that there's a lot of upgrades essentially happening in that area. I know like a lot of hotels, I mean, so tourism, capital mm-hmm. of Jamaica and stuff like that. So if they, you know, all those kind of items, um, if they can offer logistics to those people, it kind of makes sense. And that even yeah. brought me to uh, something that I, they haven't said, but I was wondering if they could do an acquisition because I was even wondering, do you think they could buy cargo handlers? Because mm-hmm. I was like, if cargo handlers um, operates in St. James and they said, hey, uh, Kingston Wharf says, hey, we're gonna, we want to set up a warehouse to off, offer logistics, which essentially, remember I said, is either make, make money two ways, terminal operations and logistics. So they, they'd set up the thing to handle logistics, but cargo handlers would essentially be happening or handling the terminal operations. So I was like, what if they were to buy a stake in cargo handlers so that they would have, they'd earn from both the terminal operations and the, the logistics services? And I was even trying to, I guess, mm. do some math on that. Uh, so this is the so top. interesting, you know, who owns yeah. cargo handlers? So, yeah, let's see. <laughs> so, this is the top 10 for cargo handlers. So, there's North yeah. Star Investments, which I think is uh, the holding company of Mark Hart's dad, who sadly passed a few years ago. I think that was his um, holding company. He owns like twenty. Mark Hart's the chairman. Yeah, he's a chairman oh. of. Mm-hmm. I think. I think. It's, yeah, I think he's chairman of Cargo Handlers. Cargo Handlers. Yeah. Um, I think it was his dad that founded the company. Then you have Jane Frey, which who work. I think also worked with his dad to found the company. Then you have Mark Hart, and so those each of them essentially owns about twenty seven percent. So that's it, that. Just them. That's eighty percent of the company. And remember, I was saying that Cargo Handlers is smaller than Kingston Wharfs. So when yeah. you look at the market cap at Cargo Handlers right now, I think the share price right at, at, as today recording, it's eleven ninety. So that values the business at just about five billion Jamaican versus Kingston Wharfs. Mm-hmm. Right now, at, at its price of twenty five dollars today, is valued at thirty, just about thirty seven billion, right? So thirty seven billion versus about five billion. Yeah. Um, they don't. I mean, they don't necessarily even have to buy eighty percent. They could maybe buy. I mean, if they want to control it, they get fifty. They go for fifty percent. And I was even wondering, like, because Mark Hart, he what was his specific role. He was the was it C? Wasn't he CEO of CPJ? Yes. And then he recently, I'm trying to remember how much of his stake he sold. Was it all of his stake in CPJ he stole to AS Bryden or a part of it? Because I was like, is it like he's maybe reaching retirement age and he's like, yo, I kind of just want to step back. Let me check. Because then I'm like, he could just be, he could have another opportunity. mm -hmm. Like leeching, selling some assets to probably double down in like, nuclear or whatever else he wants to do mm. um, because i've seen him do some 
recent business stuff. Um, I think he he bought a property down in like Treasure Beach and so on. So I don't think Mark he's necessarily Hart? slowing down. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I want to see how much he sold. Yeah. Hold on. So he, let me see. So this is before the AS Brighton bought them. You can see Mark. Oh, he's Wave Trading Limited. So his own was what? 11.28%. So he owned 11. Oh, no, but he's also. Oh, so he's Sportswear and producers wave trading so how much is that because sportswear was 23 percent hmm let me see the art did the article mention it mark hard hmm oh as bryden uh found it kind of mje which is Maybury Stock Portfolio, they exited completely. Yeah. So I'm trying to see what Mark... I think Mark is still a director of the company, but of CPJ. Let me see. Mm. So, oh, so in this article, let's see if we can show this. So David, written by David Rose, titled A.S. Bryden Buys Stake in CPJ. This was July 10th, 2024. Says, uh, Mark Hart later confirmed with the Business Observer that MJE sold... Oh, hmm. oh, he said he also confirmed that his holding companies, companies, sportswear and wave trading also sold CPJ shares to A.S. Bryden. Oh, it says, though he didn't confirm the specific sale amounts, this would likely mean Hart would retain an estimated. Oh, no, so he didn't sell all of it. I have to probably check the exact thing, but this is saying he would still own. But then I was like, I don't know. My thing was, it, I think it's like, okay, so I was trying to do some maths. So the stock price right now of cargo handlers is... Uh, 11.90 so to buy a controlling stake or 50 percent is at that price that's like what 2.5 billion jamaican i mean when i was looking at it if you one of the things about cargo handlers why i guess i haven't really looked at them before um it's illiquid. It's a, yeah it's very illiquid so when i look at the stock like for example Big up my money J A for this show analysis feature. Um, it actually allows you to see. Let, let's look at, for example, how the stock has been trading so far this year. So we're recording October. This is January. So between January to October, the total value of the stock cargo handlers that has traded is three million Jamaican dollars. 3 million Jamaican. Let's look at even, let's oh, look yeah. at last year then. Let's look at last year, how that was. So January, 2023. Where is it? Yeah, January, 2023. Well, I get more traded then, 37 million. But you, when you meds like the whole company is valued at billions of dollars, but it's, yeah. It's not look very at even. Oh, oh, it even actually gives you a liquidity value here. Look at this cargo handles liquidity. I don't know. Oh, it actually tells you what liquidity indicates how often shares are bought and sold. So, all of last year, January, January 2023 to December 2023, 0.63%. It's very um, illiquid. So, barely any of the shares of the total company are trading versus something like you're saying, yeah, look at Kingston Wharfs, for example. Let's look at the liquidity. Value trade. So let's look at 2023. Oops. Yeah, 2023. Oh, oops. Hold on. Yeah. So for 2023, Kingston Wharf's 4% liquidity. And over one point, well, one point seven billion dollars traded. So the thing is, mm -hmm. like, even though Mark Hart and them have the shares, like, 
if they actually say at some point they wanted to sell or even you know maybe they even want to buy some more uh depending they you don't really have the option it's not a very liquid stock i even look at the the queue like if you're someone who like look at it today if you're someone who wants to sell shares in cargo handlers the total buy queue only has about two hundred thousand dollars so if you have more than two hundred thousand dollars i mean yeah you can sell and then you know it may fill back up and you can sell but it's like it's, it's as i said it's not a very liquid stock so i was thinking what if uh, kicks and worse could buy them i don't think it's far-fetched for kings and worse to buy it because like you know value wise i mean kings if you buy it at the market price so say you even buy it above the market price you buy it at 15 dollars, a premium to the market yeah. price similar to like this the cpj deal when ace Bryden bought them they bought them at a price higher than the market price or um that was so if you buy it at a premium the 50 percent that's like 3.1 billion jamaican Kings the worst. That's I can't afford that because when I was looking on their balance sheet, for example, they had so up to June this June twenty twenty four, they have one point about one point three billion in cash, and they have like ten point three billion in short term investments. I guess I'd have to check exactly what investments are, but I mean you could be getting that's you know somewhat that's almost like a cash equivalent. You can get it pretty soon into cash. So they they yeah. have even with their cash reserve, and they don't really have that much debt either. Kings and worse. So I was like, you could you could either buy it out partially cash and maybe even issue shares in Kings of Wharf. So it's like Kings mm-hmm. of Wharf buys cargo, buys the controlling stake in cargo handlers, and then maybe they issue some shares to um some of the owners, like maybe Mark Hart or someone else to say, okay, now you can be a bigger company. You know, you now have Kingston and um Montego Bay, the yeah. the two I'd say largest, the two largest cities in Jamaica, and then you can control those ports. Um, well, you don't control the Kingston port completely, but you know it just make. I thought it could kind of make sense. I don't know. Yeah, and you get that piece of business way on the other side of the island. It's it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. So that was my mm-hmm. my theory there. So they you could... think they'd need to raise that? You, you think they wouldn't need to raise money then? No, I don't even think. No, I don't think they need to. They yeah. can do it pretty easily. If they want, they can probably just... I know a lot of these companies like to, you know, hold on to a lot of cash and so on. So mm-hmm. If they did, you think they would do an equity raise or a debt raise? Because uh, they I, don't have much debt. Yeah, try to say debt. I think I they have... see them doing debt over like a right issue or something like that. Could or an APO. Their loans, I see seven... This is Kingston Wharfs. I see seven billion in... In loans, non-current loans. Yeah. And yeah, like, I I don't know. That was my theory there. It could work well with the, with the Western Jamaica Logistics Hub. You know, you just control Mm -hmm. part of that port there. And especially, as we mentioned before, with a lot of those hotel projects going up there in St. James, you're going to have to bring in some of those items. And I mean, technically you could bring it into Kingston and then I guess you could drive it down there or transport it there but it's like if you could just bring it closer to the site it makes more sense to mm-hmm. me versus having to do it on the highway and spend the gas and the manpower to get the item down there you just bring yeah. it more closer to the site exactly. so I yeah mm. i don't know man all right if let's say that does happen right mm-hmm. um wh- who do you think has a greater upside Kingston Wharves or cargo handlers, as in, in terms of stock stock price. Uh I'd say cargo handlers, but the problem is like you can't <laughs> to get shares. Yeah, that's my that's always been my biggest issue with cargo handlers. Yeah, how are you gonna get shares in that company? Like mm-hmm. anything that's substantial, because if you look at the queue, mm-hmm. you could spend a couple thousand Jamaican dollars and probably halt the stock. Mm-hmm. So. You wouldn't really get if you're a you know if you're a braffing guy like Preston, you it would take you a lot of. Money. Well, actually, there's well, there's okay. there's actually units in the queue now. Is that mm, yeah, well, looking? Yeah, there's a uh-huh. I see some units there at twelve dollars fifty. That's probably, is that a yeah. top ten steak? Because I very no, I know it's not that bad. No. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, yeah it, would be, it would be harder to get shares. But, but yeah, but the problem is like if, even if you if you bought this, like say you're like yo, I go buy it at twelve fifty. Say you saw the value as fifteen twenty dollars. You buy this, and you could we said it's five hundred k units at twelve fifty. That's like six point five million Jamaican. What if you need to sell mm-hmm. some of it one day to cover part of it? The the highest <laughs> buy order is ten dollars, and we said the whole the, the entire buy queue is two hundred thousand dollars. So you could only sell that amount. So it's like you're kind of buying it and you're kind of stuck yeah, with bro, it. You, so you realize you spend six grand and you've halted the queue down. But <laughs> like you 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 sell six grand worth of shares, and mm. you've halted the queue. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's that was my theory. Um, if you already have shares in cargo handlers mm. and you hear that they're being bought out, you see a takeover bit out of nowhere, you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 You see the shares transfer. It, it's something I'd keep my finger on the pulse. And I would, in that instance, I would more be inclined to looking at purchasing Kingston Awards mm. over cargo handlers just because of the potential upside like the stock has traded much higher before i don't think it moved the price it, that much though that's the thing like maybe i, I guess know, the bro. initial like you know how you have the initial like what's the p you know 18 and they were always trading at Kingston that premium, pre- no 11 COVID. yeah it's actually 11 oh 11 wow look at that yeah p of 11 now and then with the future prospects if they do own piece of cargo handlers let's say even a, con- a control stake would be huge that would nah bro mm. definitely I no say but at look at, at look at the queue here no nah, look at the, the queue the, 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 no because no. Who, who are the people that are going to be buying this if this deal happens retail i'm, I'm thinking of it would be retail I'm, not just retail it would yes be, retail it would be retail immediately retail. Be retail that's what i'm saying like I, I, now i'm not saying like okay for me if it happened um on the initial announcement i could see it moving like probably 15 percent 15 20 percent mm. so yeah if you want to like some quick something like yeah but i mean by the end of it like if you just look at typically how announcements happen when it's like an, a little an announcement like that people rush the stock initially yeah. and then after like a week or so it starts to kind of peter it down and it'll go back down so yeah. it's not and remember Easy sellers coming out of nowhere and as i said yeah. look in the queue here before any like you're you're seeing a lot of well the audio listeners like uh, there's two large orders that i'm showing in the queue the first order is the top sell order this could even be a, a iceberg order where you see the initial value. So it's twenty six dollars, two hundred and ninety six thousand units. That's what seven point mm. eight million. Um, you could buy that and then bam it refill. What are you gonna do then? Like yeah. you think the stock price go fly then? No. <laughs> you just spent another seven mil, bro. <laughs> okay. But oh, yeah, that would yeah. be my I don't know. I thought that'd be interesting, an interesting deal. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. It would be a good. A and cool you know, deal, like you know, think honestly. about it. We maybe even. Wow, you know, I, another thing I was just mentioning. It doesn't necessarily. We, we can get into the management point here. It doesn't necessarily have to actually be Kingston Warps. Like, so we. Oh, I was meant, about to go there, bro. Because let's look at let's look at the there. ownership. So the ownership of Kingston Warps. So mm-hmm. it's a pretty tightly held company. Um, the top ten owns eighty nine percent of the company. Jeez. It's pretty high. Uh, JP Global Holdings, which is a, you know, Jamaica producers. Um, I guess one of their, well, technically it's, I guess it's, no, technically it's Panjams. Panjam owns JP Global Holdings and then Jamaica Producers Group owns Panjam. But yeah, so. Well, look, look at 10. Look at who is 10. Yeah. So Panjam owns it directly, but Panjam owns JP Global Holdings. But the point is, mm-hmm. so the parent company is JP. So JP, Jamaica producers, also listed on the stock exchange through different subsidiaries. Um, they own um, 42% of Kingston Wharf. So they are the single largest shareholder. Second largest shareholder, SBD, that's Seaboard Corporation. They're like a shipping company. They bought a stake. Um, in Kingston Works a few years back, I think partly from like NCB and stuff like that. Um, I was even mentioning that now, maybe it doesn't have to be Kingston Works buying cargo handlers. It could be maybe Jamaica producer says, "Hey, we like the, we like to own a wharf in Kingston, but why don't we own a wharf in St James?" 
Mm-hmm. And you, if you look at just how large that group is, like, and they're we just well, in the same episode with Jeffrey, he spoke about like acquisitions and his strategy mm-hmm. on acquisitions, and they're really essentially the the whole focus of the group right now, the Pan Jamaica group is they're focusing on things like oh, real estate. Um, another thing is shipping and stuff like that. So maybe they're like, hey, we want to focus more on shipping. Let's maybe buy that other side of Jamaica so we can control shipping on both ends of the island. I don't know. Yeah. 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 A deal to watch because that's literally Jeffrey's style. Mm-hmm. Acquisitions. I see Panjam Group going for them for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because, I mean, how many other ports can you buy in Jamaica? <laughs> Mm-hmm. you know yeah um yeah. and another thing i was remember we like to look at does management own shares management does own shares so mm-hmm. you can see jeffrey hall for example he's connected to like jp global holdings and he he owns shares in jamaica producers um this guy bruce brett am i pronouncing it right brett chison he works with seaboard corporation so he's connected to seaboard and he also works with kingston wharfs he so Seaboard has a stake in Kingston Works. I assume he has a stake in Seaboard. Um, also, there's this other company, Sage Logistics, which Jeffrey is actually even I think a director of that one too. Charles Johnson, a lot of the people there, and even the I think the CEO, the CEO, um, Mark Williams, he actually owns mm. shares in a company. And he wow, look at that! He even bought some recently. He increased his state by 44%. Okay, nice. He's like 12. Okay, good for him. I like to see stuff like that. Oh, I love wow. to see him keep buying more. Yeah. I love to see That's like a $5 keep... million dollars him spend on it. That's good. Mm. You see, those are the signs that we kind of like because why is he buying more? He, has sudden? he been buying more? Let me see. Over time, yeah. No, I was trying to see if he bought. Mm. So yeah, management does own some shares and stuff in the company. Um, the other thing too, where was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I I wanted to get into some of the financials of the company. So remember I was saying before 20, something that's interesting for this one, 20, you, I think you were, yeah, you were talking about it earlier, 2018, 2019, these periods are interesting because 2018, um, was a pretty good year for them. They made just under this King's Awards, they made under two billion Jamaican in profit, right? Pretty good year for them. The stock price, the average price for that year was like fifty four dollars. It's like fifty dollars. It's got fifty dollars. And their price to earnings ratio, the PE at the time was thirty nine, well, basically forty. So the PE was close to the stock price. Twenty nineteen, that was like one of the best years for the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Uh, they were more profitable, 2.6 billion in profit. Stock price, average price for the year was 67. I think it even hit 70 something dollars. And the PE, once again, close to 40. 2020, mm-hmm. the year of COVID, remember I was saying that those are a lot of shipping issues and stuff like that. Uh, but they were, profit did dip slightly, well, yeah, decently, to 2.2 billion. But the stock price for that time, average price for the year was like $50 or so. In 2021, so you're starting to see maybe some recovering on the economies and all that stuff. They had one of their, I think this was probably their best year yet at the time, three point, um, just under 3.2 billion in profit. But the stock price at the time was like $45. And you're now starting to see like, say, 2023, they did around the same 3.1 billion in profit, where you're seeing the stock price at $30. So it's, so essentially 2019, 2018, they were not as profitable as they are now, but the stock price was like essentially double what it is now. I was even looking at the, the shareholder equity. They've grown shareholder equity. Um, they've essentially doubled it between like 2018 yeah. to now. They've doubled the shareholder equity, but the stock price has essentially half. Isn't that kind of interesting? That's so funny. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just that's how, that's how stocks work. But people yeah. say that could be like a buying opportunity. Who knows? Um, and I was even tracking, like, how are they doing so far this year? Because they've only re- released reports up to June, like mid middle of this year. Um, and I was doing some projections. If they continue at this rate, they won't. If they continue at this rate, 
they won't beat 2023. But the only thing is that I should probably go deeper because I assume there'd be some... Yeah, like, especially, I guess, leading up to Christmas and things Christmas, like that. There'd probably be some Black more... Friday. I guess I don't know yeah. when... I guess the shipping of that would start would have been in quarter three. Mm-hmm. July, August, September. It wouldn't ship November to get the, like you're trying to start stocking up the stuff from before. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, I was doing Even some. At the same time, most of what we do ship in is, as you say, it's like, you know, fuel and things like that. But mm-hmm. still, um, actually, we can just take a look at it now to see if there's some seasonality. Uh I'm going to just find Kingston Wars because My Money JA does. Guys, if you like My Money JA, use code LIMITLESS. If you if you want to be able to get this analytical in in like your research and so on, using My Money JA really does show you quite a bit of data. So use code LIMITLESS if you're purchasing My Money JA. Yeah, code LIMITLESS. It, it helps us out on the channel. So quarter... I guess you're showing quarterly. Yeah. yeah. So quarter for... Q3, let's say Q3 2023 versus Q2, Q1. So Q3 and Q4 last year were their better quarters for the year. Q4, they made just on a 900 million profit. Q3, slightly over 900 million profit. Q2, 600 mil. Q1, just under 700 mil. Um, So they almost. You could say they almost doubled. Um, they went almost fifty percent more in terms of profits in Q three, Q four. Almost fifty percent. So let's say let's give a if it does follow the same trend as last year. Let's say forty percent, right? So far, you have six months as how much um, in terms of total for this year? Six months for profit. Yeah, for uh, profit, one point four billion. Now, let's say we increase that by 40%, right? So let's say it's 1.4 billion, 1.4 times 40%, so times 1.4. That would be 1.96 plus 1.4. So projected would be 3.3. Mm, so uh, they beat last 3. year. 4 billion. Yeah, they'd yeah. probably so be. Their best, I think it'd be their best year. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the stock price is what? <laughs> Today it's $25. Twenty-five dollars. Um, and so last yeah. year it was. No, I mean, wow. I was when I was looking at it. I'm like, mm, like fundamentally, it it's fallen so much. Like yeah. last year, it averaged thirty dollars. Now it's twenty-five. Mm-hmm. Like fundamentally, company yeah, is fundament- so good. Because fundamentally, profits last year was their second best year in terms of profits. Not far from their best year. Uh, mm-hmm. you look at. Equity, not a metric to value the business. The shareholder equity is up significantly. They're touching close to 50 billion in shareholder equity, yet they're trading at at a price now. I think it's like, how much I said? At this price, it is 37 billion. So they're trading below book value. And just to remind people, like, um, equity essentially take the assets of the business, so the value in the business, like, in this case, their machines, their IT infrastructure, all of those stuff, that's the assets. And then you, you have different loans and stuff to pay out liabilities, people, your own money. If you were to pay out all of those loans one time, the liabilities and all that stuff, what is left over after? People, Some people say, oh, that's the true worth of the business. Uh, that's the equity. So essentially, the market is saying, hey, this is actually, if you were to buy the company, if like at the market cap, the, the current valuation of the market, you could have you know a lot, essentially a lot of excess money. So people would say, "Oh, that's like a good price you're buying it at." Um, PE wise, I mean, I'd say not that bad. It's like what fourteen or so. Um, so I mean, for me, if they, if they, if they're able to, I guess, navigate some of these um, supply chain issues. If the construction industry continues to do well, even I guess one of the other things, like if you to look at like the Jamaican economy, if the Jamaican economy um, performs well, uh, naturally it, it kind of flows in because like if people are doing well, earning money, stuff like that, they're going to be, you're going to, you know, business is going to be booming. Businesses need to import things. 
um, things like that. Um, it kind of bodes well for them because like, they are essentially, I think, tied to the economy. So, and if also we're seeing like interest rates starting to trend down. Uh, mm-hmm. They've set up, they've remember they've spent a lot of money on expansion projects, their logistics centers. Um, yeah. The, the yeah, like the bursts and the logistics center and stuff like that to be able to handle more business. Um, you know, I, I think business wise, they're probably gonna, they can do pretty well. Um, stock price wise, I mean, if you we said today, it's twenty five dollars. I wouldn't be surprised that it could maybe like next year. It's that, and the other thing too is like it's a, it's it's a blue chip stock I'd say, because mm-hmm. like if you're like say a pension or something like that, it kind of you know it's like oh yeah it's the wharf. There, there's not many you can just buy another wharf or can just build up yeah. another wharf in Jamaica. Jamaica is naturally going to always need to import these stuff, so it's like they're naturally I think going to continue make revenue and profit and stuff like that um so i wouldn't be surprised if stock could be like probably 32 dollars or something like that so i'd say that's that's probably like what 20 i'd say probably 25 30 percent in the next year mm-hmm. yeah let's say that do they pay dividends they do i think it's, it's not like a high yield i think last I year it was... dividends only for for, for um, blue chip to be honest because blue chip stocks low like pension mm. funds, sorry, love um, stocks that pay like dividends and so on. So yeah, mm-hmm. they paid a dividend earlier this year in August uh, mm-hmm. 16. I mean, I, I it makes there. sense that they don't probably pay out too much in dividends now because they probably want, it's like the type of business you want to, because they make money from the terminals and the logistics. You want to set it up so that you kind of built it up to a point that you have a good amount of capacity, you're earning good income from it, and now that you're reaping the rewards of your investments, you can mm-hmm. now start to put out that excess cash in dividends. So I guess yeah. the con- the, the, it's like, should they pay dividends now or invest in the infrastructure to then allow them to be able to pay more dividends in five, ten mm-hmm. years down the line? I think it's a pretty, probably a good retirement stock, you'd say. Yeah. I w- at this point, definitely. Um, I'm not seeing how the stock could go much lower than 25 right now unless something major happens. People said that about uh, NCB at 100. No, I would, I, we were 50. not people. We were definitely not people. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it is definitely a retirement stock. I think it's a stock that was recommended to me when I just started investing. That's probably what the brokerage houses recommend. They're like, mm. Oh, my Kingston Awards, buy this, buy that. Um, of course, we're not going to tell you guys to buy anything. We want you to consult your licensed financial advisors. Yes. <laughs> not trying to, you know, get in trouble with anybody. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I do like the stock now that you say it. Um, and now that we've discussed it a bit more, I realize there's certain things I do need to look at. Um, the cargo handlers thing was always on the table, but now it seems way more possible. So I think that would be so fun to look for. Uh, and just looking for more of those dots out there, more of those Gleena articles out there to see, is it going to happen? Or are we just speculating? And it may not ever happen. <laughs> One way to find out. Yeah. Well, guys, if you really love this episode and love the detailed analysis that we always go through, all right, please subscribe. Tell your friend them to subscribe as well, because we have a goal. We're trying to get to 1,000. And if you tell your friend them to subscribe, you're likely making them money inadvertently, <laughs> you know? So yeah. hit and you that can, subscribe bell, Remember, guys. you guys can also comment below on the YouTube video which stock you'd like us to review next. Your, your stock may just be the one we pick. Yep. <laughs> well, that's all from us. Thank you, guys. As always, our beautiful listeners, Limitless, out. Peace.